Hello, everyone. I hope that you are well. My name is Professor Andrew Timming, and once again, I want to extend a warm welcome to you for joining me in this lecture corresponding to Chapter 10 of the Textbook Applied Statistics. This is the second lecture uh, in Chapter 10, and it's entitled Probabilities and Odds. So in the previous lecture, in Chapter 10, Lecture 1, I introduced a new technique, a new statistical technique to you called logistic regression analysis. And logistic regression analysis, as you learned in the previous lecture, is a form of regression that is not based on ordinary least squared logic, but rather on maximum likelihood expectation. And rather than being predicated on a normal distribution, it is instead predicated on an S-shaped sigmoid distribution. Now, before we move into interpretation of logistic regression, I wanted to spend uh, a little bit of time talking about probabilities and odds. So this is kind of like an intermission or like a mini lecture uh, in between the previous lecture, which introduced logistic regression, and the following lecture, lecture three, which will talk about how to interpret logistic regression. So it's a bit of a mini math lesson uh, to focus on probabilities and odds. Uh, it's not terribly difficult stuff, but because the concepts of probabilities, odds, and logged odds might be foreign to some people, or maybe you learned about it long ago, I thought I would provide you with a bit of a refresher on this topic. Of course, this is the textbook that we're using in this course. It's called Applied Statistics Business and Management Research, and you'll never guess who wrote this textbook. Yep, it was me. So the lecture that I'm currently giving corresponds to chapter 10. Please take some time to read chapter 10 before you proceed with this lecture. Uh, I hope you enjoy reading this textbook. And obviously, if you have any feedback, please, please feel free to send it on to me so I can incorporate it into the next edition of the textbook. All right, let's get back to the basics and let's talk about probabilities and odds. First, we'll talk about what a probability is, how to calculate a probability, and then we'll talk about what the odds are. Uh, you should be already familiar with these concepts. Uh, if you take a, a math course in high school, uh, in secondary school, you will have come across these concepts before. So they should already be vaguely familiar. But again, as I said, this is a bit of a refresher, a bit of a mini lecture on these topics. So we're gonna start from the most basic and then work our way up. So starting with probability, what is a probability? A probability can be defined as the likelihood that something will occur or will not occur. And probability is always a number that falls between zero and one. So if you've calculated a probability and it's a number that's less than zero, in other words, a negative number, or greater than one, then you've made some kind of calculation error somewhere because a probability always has to be, has to be between zero and one. And what you can do with your probability is multiply it by 100 to give you a percentage. Sometimes people think more clearly in terms of percentages than probabilities. So if you get a probability of 0.75, you multiply that by 100 and you get a 75% chance. If you get a probability of 0.50, you multiply that by 100 and you get a percentage of 50%. So to calculate a probability, it's quite simple. You just take the number of events divided by the number of possible outcomes. So for example, let's say that there are uh, 100 people currently listening to this lecture and 50 people learn something today about probabilities. 
then to calculate the probability of learning something about probabilities, you simply take 50 divided by 100, and then you get a 50% chance that you learn something about probability today just by listening to this lecture. Obviously, I hope that the actual percentage is significantly higher, uh, including 100%, but it's just for illustrative purposes. Now that's probability. What about the odds? The odds is a ratio, right? So it's not a single number, it's a ratio. And this ratio represents the probability that something will happen vis-a-vis -vis the probability that something will not happen, okay? So if you're a gambler, right, if you tend to go to the races, you probably are used to this term, the odds. And how does the odds relate to probability? Well, the calculation of the odds equals the probability of something happening divided by one minus the probability. All right, let's start with a very simple example. And this is the example of flipping a coin. And we're going to assume in this example that the coin that we're flipping is perfectly symmetrical, right? That means that it's not uh, heavier on one side compared to the other side. So if we have a perfectly symmetrical coin, then every time we flip it, we have, as you will well be aware, a 50% chance of it landing heads up. And by the same token, or on the other side of the coin, so to speak, you also have a 50% chance of it landing tails up. So it can land either heads or tails. And the probability in this case, given it's a perfectly symmetrical coin, is 0.5. All right. So with a probability of 0.5, how would we convert that into the odds? Right. So to do this, we take the simple equation, odds equals probability divided by 1 minus the probability, and we simply fill in the, the blanks. Right. So the odds equals 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0.5. 1 minus 0.5 is obviously 0.5. So if you take 0.5 divided by 0.5, you get an odds of 1. So a probability of 0.5 corresponds to an odds of one. And the way that we would express this is that there is a ratio in this particular case of one to one. And that is to say that the coin will land on heads just as often as it lands on tails. Okay, let's look at another example of how we can use uh, probability to calculate odds. Uh, and this example looks at the chances that I had a coffee this morning. And I'm going to say that there is an 80% chance that I had a coffee this morning, which is a pretty, pretty good chance, pretty high chance. Uh, for some people, it might be a 100% chance, but I'm going to assume in this case that there's an 80% chance that I had my coffee this morning. So if there's an 80% chance, then we know that our probability of me having had a coffee this morning is 0.8, is 0.8, right? So how do we convert that probability of 0.8 into odds? Again, we simply fill in the blanks. So odds equals the probability divided by 1 minus the probability. Simply fill in the blanks. So we have odds equals 0.8 divided by 1 minus 0.8. 1 minus 0.8, of course, is 0.2. So to calculate the odds, we take 0.8, divide that by 0.2, and we get an odds of 4. So again, the odds is expressed as a ratio, and the ratio in this case is 4 to 1. Right? So the way we would interpret an odds of 4 to 1 is that I'll have a coffee four mornings for every one morning that I don't have a coffee. All right, let's look at another example. This one's a bit of an embarrassing example. I'm sure you have on occasion tripped climbing the stairs. I certainly have. 
uh, and it's never nice when that happens. Let's assume that there is a 10% chance that I will trip climbing the stairs today. Uh, in reality, I hope it's not that high because uh, that doesn't look very, very good to me if it's a 10% chance. Um, but just for hypothetical purposes, let's say that there's just a 10% chance that I will trip climbing the stairs today. So a 10% chance of something happening corresponds to a probability of 0.1. So the probability is 0 0.1 that I will trip climbing up the stairs today. How do we convert 0.1 into odds? Right. So to do that, you simply fill in the blanks. Odds equals P divided by 1 minus P. If P equals 0.1, then odds equals 0.1 divided by 1 minus 0.1. 1 minus 0.1, of course, is 0.9. So to calculate the odds, we take 0.1 divided by 0.9, and we get an odds of 0.111. So as I said before, in the previous two examples, it's the same uh, in this case. The odds is expressed as a ratio. And in this case, where there's a probability of 0.1, the odds ratio is 0.111 to 1. All right. So the, the way that you would interpret this is I will trip taking the stairs 0.111 times for every one time that I don't trip. Uh, and obviously successfully climb the stairs with my dignity intact. So odds are fairly easy to interpret, but there is a serious problem with using the odds in the context of logistic regression. And that's that the odds do not fit our S-shaped sigmoid curve that we use in maximum likelihood estimation. So why is that the case? So think about it in these terms. An event that has a less than 50% chance of happening is always going to be an odds between 0 and 1, right? It will never drop down to uh, negative numbers. And if it has a less than 50% chance of happening, it will never go above 1. But for an event that has a greater than 50% chance of happening, the odds will be a number that extends from 1 to essentially infinity. So when you're dealing with odds, the number is always going to be between 0 and infinity. It never goes into the negative side of things. So as I said, these are easy to interpret and understand, these odds. But the problem is that because they don't go negative, the odds don't fit into our S-shaped sigmoid distribution that we use in the context of logistic regression. So what's the solution? What do we do about this if we're trying to use a statistical technique that is predicated on probabilities and odds? How do we actually get this technique to work using odds if odds don't go negative? Well, the solution to that question is not to use the odds, but rather to use the logged odds. So what does it mean to use logged odds? So when you do logistic regression, you are calculating probabilities and you're calculating odds. But as I said, the odds don't work in the context of this statistical technique. So once we've calculated the odds, we need to convert those odds into logged odds, uh, which we also refer to as logits. And logged odds are calculated by taking the natural log of the odds that we've calculated, right? So remember, so we, just to review, probabilities are always between 0 and 1 and odds are always between zero and infinity. But what's interesting about logged odds, when we take a logit, when we log the odds, we end up with a distribution that goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it's through this mechanism that we can fit that sigmoid distribution. So the logged odds, what's interesting about the use of logged odds, is that they show 
larger effects in the middle of the sigmoid probability distribution, as you would expect, and smaller effects at the upper and the lower ends of the sigmoid probability distribution. Okay, so let's look at just a few uh, simple examples of logged odds, all right? So we're gonna assume that there's a 50% chance of something happening today, right? So the probability in this case is 0.5, 50%. We could be flipping a coin or it could be something else. Now it follows that if we want to convert that 50% to odds, not logged odds, but odds, uh, we simply fill in the blanks. So we have P divided by one minus P. Uh, this is a calculation that we've already done above. So we get 0.5 divided by one minus 0.5 or 0.5 divided by 0.5, which equals one. So with the 50% probability, we have an odds ratio of one to one. But when you take the natural log of one, so this is converting the log into logged, the uh, odds into logged odds, the logged odds or the logit suddenly becomes zero. So you take the logged odds of one, you get a logged odds of zero. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, and this is an example where there's a less than 50% chance of something happening. So whatever, whatever it is, whatever we're talking about, let's assume that there's a 30% chance of it happening, right? So if there's a 30% chance of something happening, then that cor corresponds to a probability of 0.3. So if we wanna take that probability of 0.3 and convert that or express that as odds, then we simply fill in the blanks, P divided by one minus P, if P equals 0.3, then we have 0.3 divided by one minus 0.3, 1 minus 0.3, of course, is 0.7. So to calculate the odds, we have 0.3 divided by 0.7, which is 0.429. And that would be expressed as an odds ratio of 0.429 to 1. But when we take the natural log of 0.429, then we turn that into a logged odds or a logit. And the logged odds of the natural log of 0.429 is minus 0.827. So suddenly we can use negative numbers to fit, again, the sigmoid distribution. Let's look at one more example, but in this case, we'll use an example of a probability uh, that is greater than 50%. So let's assume, whatever we're looking at, let's assume that there's a 70% chance of something happening. So if there's a 70% chance of something happening, then the probability, as you know, is 0.7. So to convert a probability of 0.7 to odds, we simply fill in the blanks. P divided by one minus P, so we have 0.7 divided by one minus 0.7. One minus 0.7, of course, is 0.3. So the odds is 0.7 divided by 0.3, which equals 2.33. So that would be expressed as an odds, odds ratio of 2.33 to one. When you take the natural log of 2.33, you get the logged odds. And the logged odds in this case is 0.827. So positive 0.827, right? So when there's a 50%, a greater than 50% chance of something happening, you get a positive logit. And where there's a less than 50% chance of happening, you get a negative logit. So here you can see a table of the calculations that we just went through, how you start with probability, you convert the probability to odds, and then you take the natural log of those odds to create your logits and it's the logits that fit in the context of the sigmoid distribution that we use in logistic regression so we're converting every probability into a number and when we create that number as a logit it's a number that goes from negative infinity to positive infinity right so positive numbers remember 
have a greater than 50% chance of happening, positive logits, and negative logits have a less than 50% chance of something happening. And a number of zero, which would be at the exact center of a sigmoid distribution, means that there is a 50-50 chance of something happening. So that would be how you interpret the logged odds. So now you have an understanding of how we do logistic regression analysis. Logistic regression analysis looks at the probability, uh, given a configuration of independent variables, the probability of outcome A versus outcome B. But rather than looking at it in terms of probabilities, what we do is we convert the probabilities to odds, and then we convert the odds to logged odds, or logits, and the reason we do that is that only logits, not probabilities and not odds, but only logged odds can fit within this sigmoid distribution that you see in front of you. And it's this distribution that we use in order to estimate our results in a logistic regression analysis. All right, thank you very much for bearing with me in this little mini lecture on uh, odds and probabilities. I hope that this was a good refresher and I feel that if you understand this material reasonably well, you should be well positioned then to move on to the next lecture corresponding to chapter 10. So this is lecture three, chapter 10, where we'll look at how to interpret logistic regression analysis. Bye now.